So far away, Nisha, what's the longest you've ever had to hold a pee? Ooh, <laughs> I remember when I was younger, when I used to play games a lot on my PlayStation, I used to just hold my pee in for hours and not go oh, to no. the toilet because I'd just be too busy playing games. <laughs> Don't do that, it's not healthy, folks. I know. <laughs> Jim Carrey told me that. Astronauts are fucking heroes because there aren't many other descriptors you can use to talk about guys who willingly allow themselves to be strapped to a billion dollars worth of bleeding edge technology built by the lowest bidder that's going to be sent hurtling into the lower atmosphere at three times the speed of sound. Matt, I did it on the first take, wow. That was, that's good. <laughs> have I ever done an intro in the first take, Nisha? Yeah, you have. Um, not always, no, but not many. You have. <laughs> not many. Pull back that curtain, how often do I fuck up lines? Um, quite often. <laughs> All the time, yeah. And we've been doing it, what, three years at this point? Yeah. So every time I see a comment, it's, oh, you should, like, stream these videos being recorded live. That'd be interesting. Nah. No, definitely Honestly, not. Honestly, folks, oh, half these videos are just me messing up and re-recording lines. That said, it's not like space travel is without its downsides. Just ask Alan Shepard, a man whose historic first flight into space was marred by the fact he smelled like piss the entire time. First of all, I need to know, can astronauts pee in space? Yes, astronauts and cosmonauts can absolutely urinate and defecate in space. And there is an entire cottage industry um, dedicated to designing technology that makes this easier. And um, it's now so sophisticated that astronauts and cosmonauts can um, poop and pee inside of their spacesuits, thanks to something called I shit you not, the Maximum Absorbency Garment, or the MAG or MAG, um, colloquially known here on Earth as a space diaper, um, which while funny, um, I don't think really sells how advanced this like, you know, piece of underwear technology is, because when I say the word space diaper, um, what do you think, Nisha? What, what's the image that comes to mind? I just think of a, a massive diaper, <laughs> just yes, like, like you put on a baby. <laughs> You are imagining a cartoonishly large, unwieldy diaper, just like that's all soggy and sat inside the spacesuit. And I'm going to take a minute to put some respect on the maximum absorbency garment because it's described as being more akin to a pair of bike shorts. And the garment is known as being exceptionally thin and it's comprised of multiple layers of literal space age technology. And that is capable of absorbing and wicking away 400 times its own weight in moisture before it becomes damp. Jesus. Yeah, which means that an astronaut can, I think, up to like a litre, two litres of piss into it before it even starts to feel damp. And for people wondering, yes, it can also absorb poo, but most astronauts and cosmonauts willingly hold poo in because it's easier to hold in a poo than it is to hold in a wee. But um, this maximum absorbency gamma is so high tech that an astronaut can just go to the bathroom in space and not even feel it. Like, that's how good this thing is. And it's one of those things where I get annoyed hearing about it because like why is that technology not existing on earth yet and the answer is it costs a fucking fortune yeah i can imagine it's, it's like do you know the army has silent velcro no i didn't know that yeah not many people do but um the army has developed silent velcro and because as you might imagine folks at home military personnel um don't want to dick around with buttons or zippers or things like that you need to be able to get in and out of your um, soldier guard very quickly and Velcro is the ideal solution for that. The problem is it makes noise. And let's say you're on like you know a clandestine special forces mission, and you're like, you know pulling off your Velcro vest. So that's going to make some noise. So the army does have silent Velcro that they do not let the public have because once it falls into public hands, then enemy combatants can buy. It's like damn it, I want silent Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, wow, that's so cool. Yeah, it's like uh, I think British soldiers um, have the these special underwear that never need washing. Um, and it's got oh. like uh, silver in the lining, which um, decontaminates it as you're wearing it. And it can be worn for three months before it starts to get a bit fusty. Holy shit. Yeah. That's and insane. I want that shit. Where's like my super high tech clothing that never gets dirty? Because it's expensive. <laughs> it is expensive, but if you, could, if you don't need to wash the t-shirt, if you could just wear a t-shirt for like six months, <laughs> I'm not taking that shit off. Then again, with lockdown happening, this, how many days have you woken up in your pyjamas and gone, what's even the fucking point of taking these off? I'm going to be back in them again in two minutes. Um, the first lockdown, a lot of days I sat here recording with you and editing in like my dressing gown and pyjamas because I was like, fuck it. But then I think it got to a point where we discussed this, saying um, you feel better if you like get dressed yeah. and like, prepare yourself for work. And I've done that ever since and 
it, so, is, it makes you feel more productive. So people are wondering, even though I'm recording in my bedroom right now, I do get changed for these videos. I get changed every day, in fact. Um, I am wearing skinny jeans because that's what I'll feel comfortable. I don't wear a belt, though. That's something I start doing around the house. It's like, fuck, you're not wearing a belt. <laughs> Bollocks. I, I'm an adult. I don't have to wear a belt. Anyway, Alan Shepard. So you said that peeing in space is not really a big deal because you can do that. Yes, it is a solved issue for today's astronauts, but the same is not true of the earliest pioneers of space travel, including the topic of today's video, Alan Shepard. Um, because back then, missions were short enough where astronauts could just hold it in. And as a result, spacesuits were not designed with the idea that astronauts would be urinating inside them, which was a problem for Mr. Shepard during the Freedom 7 mission, which was um, supposed to take just one or two hours, but due to numerous delays, ended up with him spending about eight hours inside of his spacesuit, the majority of which was spent with it smelling like piss because Alan Shepard, thinking that the mission was only going to be an hour or two long and that if he needed the bathroom, he could just hold it in, spent his morning drinking copious amounts of coffee and orange juice, um, the former of which is well known as a diuretic, um, which is a word for people who don't know means it makes you go to the bathroom. So that's why if you drink loads of coffee, you need to go to the toilet a lot. That was a bad move on his part. <laughs> and the story goes that after being stuck in the command capsule for several hours, just sat there doing nothing, um, as the team on the ground scrambled to like, you know, fix the problem, um, literally minutes before he was set to hurtle into space, Alan Shepard radio command and told them simply, man, I gotta pee. So what happened then? Did they have to cancel the mission? They couldn't cancel the mission, no Nisha, because millions and millions of dollars were on the line. And um, uh, Command told Shepard to wait while they checked with their scientists and experts how to solve this issue. And like, unbeknownst to Shepard, on the ground there was a mad dash scramble to figure out how to like, you know, like, let Shepard relieve himself. Because like, experts were there going, well, the inside of his suit is just filled with technology. Like, it is some of the most sophisticated and delicate um, technology like on Earth right now. We really don't know what's going to happen if he just urinates all over it. Like, the suit was not designed for this. And after several frantic minutes of discussion, a consensus was reached that it would probably be okay for Shepard to piss inside his suit. All right, so what do you mean by probably? Well, as I said, the inside of Shepard's spacesuit, and in fact, all spacesuits um, are filled to the brim uh, with sophisticated, delicate technology, um, none of which really responds well to being pissed on. And there was a genuine worry that if Shepard urinated in his suit, it could short circuit the life support systems contained therein, which in turn would fucking kill him. Ooh. And um, they told Shepard this and said, as a precaution, we're going to turn off um, the electrical sensors inside your suit temporarily while you piss so that you don't short circuit them. And I'm going to imagine that that made for potentially the tensest piss in human history. Because that's the thing, bear in mind folks at home, he'd been holding this for hours and it was probably of great relief that he could relieve himself. But at the same time, he had just been told by the smartest people in the world that uh, there's about a 50-50 chance it could short-circuit your suit and kill you. That's so scary. It it's is. the scariest um, like, piss. <laughs> it's the, the tensest, scariest urination to have ever taken place. And fortunately for Shepard, um, his suit did not short-circuit and kill him, but um, some of his life support sensors did when they got turned back on, or failed to turn back on because the suit was covered in piss. And if that wasn't bad enough, this was a space suit, remember, so it was hermetically sealed from the outside world. It meant that the lingering whiff of pee, coffee pee, remember, because oh. he had a lot of coffee and orange juice that morning, just permeated throughout the suit for the next several hours of the mission. While admittedly him smelling like pee during the Freedom 7 mission um, is more of a footnote to his story, because like he was an incredible man, he had a, an incredible life. He went to the moon a couple of years later. Like, there's a picture, here's a picture of him on the fucking moon. Like what, what baller that guy was. But uh, the Freedom 7 mission was very famously um, like the, the mission that sent the first American to space. And I just think it's kind of amusing that the first American in space um, just smelled like piss the entire time. <laughs> it doesn't diminish what he accomplished or, you know, the, the, or the weight and gravity of that moment, if you'll forgive the pun, but he smelled like pee. The guy got to go. Because when you got to go, you got to go. And I love that trope in movies. I'm not sure about you, Nisha. Just the uh, person running to the bathroom during a really tense moment. 
Oh, it's that scene in um, American Pie. Uh, <laughs> shit brick. <laughs> yeah, he's just they put all the, the they put all the laxatives in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God. Oh. Oh. Oh, you have uh, uh, the the famous one is the uh, the Jurassic Park one. Where well, the lawyer uh, runs to the toilet to hide from the T Rex. It's like, where's he going? Well, when you gotta go, you gotta go. <laughs> it's, like, it's fair enough. Or you have, um, uh, like, what was it now? The naked gun moment. The naked gun where he's still wearing the mic when he goes to the bathroom and you can just hear him pissing for 40 minutes. <laughs> and speaking of film representations of people taking a huge piss, like, it's baffling to me how many scenes we have of Tom Hanks just pissing. Like, you think, oh, there's the famous one in Castaway, where he pees into the ocean, but then you have, like, Green Mile. Green Mile, Where he yeah. also pees in Green Mile. And then I think in Apollo 13, for the space theme, he also pees in that, because he pees in space. Is that what is it specifically about Tom Hanks pissing that filmmakers find so interesting that they have to keep putting it into movies? Very strange. And that's the thing, like, you know this from experience, and you're like, we've lived in the same house before, and we've been on nights out. Like, I am infamous in our friend group because I always need to pee. Yeah, <laughs> like every 10 minutes, like, just going I'm, to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm going to the bathroom, and before anyone comments or sends me a message, no, I don't have a bladder problem. I've been to the doctors because I, people were that worried about me. It is just that I've worked from home for so long that my ability to hold it in has just been destroyed. And this is probably something a lot of people out there have never even thought about. But when you work in like, you know, a traditional place, like an office, um, a restaurant like I used to, what have you, um, there are occasions where you just cannot go to the toilet. Just for whatever reason. Uh, however, when I started working at home, it's like, well, I need to go to the bathroom. So I'm just going to go. When it, like, the moment I felt that first tingle, it's like straight to the bathroom. And five, six, seven, ten years now of doing that means that the instant, even though I know in my head I can hold it, the instant I get that flutter and need in the bathroom, I've got to go. I can't hold it anymore. <laughs> I, I need to go. It's like, well, I don't because I can hold it. But basically, I've had ten years of Pavlovian conditioning that the instant I feel the need to go to the bathroom, I need to go straight away. <laughs> and it's ruined my ability to hold it and it's so annoying. Uh, I think, like, with me, like, I could go ages without going to the toilet, but I think it's mainly because I don't drink as much as I should do, because mm -hmm. the moment I try and drink more water, I'm going, like, every half an hour, it feels like, or needing to go like, every half an hour. Yeah, it's like, what is this? I, I need to get rid. <laughs> so, yeah, I think I just don't drink enough to, like, need to go very often. And the problem that's relatively more recent for me, caused by videos, is... Folks, I don't know if you've probably noticed in every single one of these videos I have a mug or cup or glass in my hand of some uh, kind and like, we record three or four of these in a day and that's because I just like having something to do with my hands. Because if we don't have a cup, I, I just stand awkwardly and that's not fun or I'll like overly gesticulate. So I, a solution I find is to hold a mug. But that means now every time I stand up, I look at my kettle and go, do I want a cup of tea? And, it's like, and the answer is I don't need a cup of tea, but I should, I'm going to get one. Yeah. And more <laughs> recently, I've just been drinking a lot of coffee because people probably noticed that we're in lockdown. We've not really had any drinking videos the last couple of months because I don't like the idea of drinking on my own. It sounds super fucking depressing. <laughs> so you can pull back the curtain on this. Like whenever we do drinking videos in the past, we'd be in the office together. We normally go out for a meal or a drink after the fact. Yeah. But I can't do that now. So I just thought, oh, I'll just have a coffee instead. And now I have like three or four coffees on recording days. And I remember like Googling, is this bad? And I checked it went, oh, well, a safe amount is five coffees a day and I thought man five coffees a day sounds fucking dangerous and then I remember that my mum has 10 cups of coffee a day really yeah wow. and she smokes 20 a day as well so I went, oh yeah you know what addictive stuff just runs in my uh, family I guess maybe I'm just addicted to drinking tea and going to the bathroom yeah, my my mum and my stepdad drink probably about 10 cups of tea a day and I I get bored yeah. like I'll have I've had a cup of tea today I'm just like nah I don't think I want another I'll have something different it says it all that we're bored of tea but uh do uh, you know what? I, I guess this goes at the end of the video because this has gone on way too long. So that's going to be the end of the video um, uh, for the editor. And I guess if they leave this bit in, um, sometimes we just have conversations that flow naturally. And, well, you know, we shift videos around because that's the power of editing.